Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Rebecca Wolf, and she is an author, and she focuses on parenting without punishment, and this is a great topic that I think a lot of people need to listen to, is parenting your children without using punishment and how that could actually be effective and even more effective than the ways of punishing a child um, through different methods that have been used in the past. So, Rebecca, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, good morning, Stacy. So I have a, uh, a book that came out last October, and it's called The Gift of a Punishment-Free Childhood. And it's the story of my journey in raising two of my children without punishment. Um, it uh, shares all kinds of ideas on other ways. It encourages families to think through what is going to work best for them. Right. And also talks a little bit about why, the why of why we would want to go in this direction. I think it's so, you know, important to, you know, there's so many different ways, you know, people talk about punishment and how you should raise your child. And, you know, you, you hear a lot of people from old school that says, you know, punishment is necessary. Punishment is needed. That's how you discipline a child. That's how you get them on the right track. And then you have a newer generation that thinks completely different and they use less punishment and they, you know, they focus on different methods of raising their children. Now, what have you had, you talked to me previously, about how you have four children and you had two different methods of parenting that you tried on your children and you found one to be more effective. Maybe you could talk a little about why it's so important, you know, to, um, you know, not always incorporate punishment into a relationship with your children when it comes to raising them and then how it could actually work against you. And then we can talk a little about that um, test that you did and how it turned out because I'm very excited to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, really the, what we want to do is, is uh, you know, a parent's role is really to discipline, right? And, yes. and really what I encourage parents to think about is our job is really to prepare our children for adulthood. Yes. You know, some of our conversation ahead of time was we don't want to baby a, a child, right? Our goal is really to prepare them for that. And one of the best ways that we do that is we model relationships that are effective. Mm -hmm. And the primary relationship, of course, with the child is with their parent. And so when we uh, try to control their behavior through punishment, when we use punishment as a way to control their behavior, that's what they're learning. They're learning that, oh, okay, the person in power or the, you know, the person who is in control of the situation can use punishment to control another person's behavior, right? right? And that's really the cycle that I would like to see broken in our world, because it has, um, I think, contributed to so many of the negative situations that we see around us. Yeah. So in return, in order to teach that um, child to, to be a functioning, happy adult, is we model what a healthy relationship looks like. And a healthy relationship looks like one that is two ways, right? Where both people are participating. Um, it's one where there's mutual respect. There's one where um, we're not blaming or shaming or you know trying to control another's behavior. And so because children learn what they live, we want to provide an environment where they're learning you know, positive ways to address conflict. Yeah. And so if um, let's just use an example or, you know, talk about what the process is. So let's say that a child does misbehave. You know, what you want to do is you just want to clearly state what the error is. Here's what you did. And, and this just isn't what, what we do, right? right? Living on this planet, you know, we don't hit each other. So, mm -hmm. you know, two children, they hit each other. And then you say, here's what you need to do when you're angry, right? Here's a better way to do it. And then have a conversation with them. What are you going to do next time? What are you going to do next time your, you know, your sister takes your favorite toy away? And you have that conversation with them. You engage them in that process. And of course, these steps change throughout a child's developmental process, right? You're going to work with a two-year-old, three-year-old very differently than you're going to work with a 10-year-old, yes. very differently than you're, how you're going to work with a 15-year-old. Right. 
And what have you noticed when you were working with your children and you did a little bit of an experiment, you know, what differences did you notice between, you know, being more sterner with, you know, maybe the, the first two and then being more lenient in, in handling, um, handling discipline in, in a different way? Right. You know, it, interestingly, the first thing that comes to mind is that kind of surprise gift that came with doing that. Mm -hmm. And that was my experience parenting, right? So I have memories with my, with my older two of putting them in timeout and, and it just can be heart wrenching sometimes, right? Yeah, or, oh, you know, maybe um, sending them to their room and they're so upset and it, it really isn't helping anything. And you're like, this just isn't working, right? right? And, and so there was this, you know, pretty constant stress level yeah. of how do I do this and really feeling like it wasn't working out well, but didn't really have any other tools. Um, and, and of course the, you know, the relationship does get a little bit strained. And so then with the second two, when you weren't doing that, it was just brought this calmness to me and, you know, to the household. Yeah. Um, and some of that you have to work on, right? So yeah. one of the things I have to say about this work is because it's not natural, because it's not how we were raised, right? it takes effort, right? So, you know, let's say that you walk into the, you've asked your 10 year old to, you know, before we leave, can you just put that, that game that you were playing away? Yeah. And you walk into the room and it's not put away. Right. And, right. and depending on our own stuff, mm -hmm. right. That might trigger us like, how dare they not do what I say, or how come they won't listen to me or, you know, kind of whatever our own stuff is, you have to stop because it's not about you. Right. It's about helping this child learn how to live on this planet. And that yeah. takes effort. You have to bring that calmness. Cause if you walk into that room angry, it's just, it's, it's not going to be effective, but if you bring yourself down into your heart, be calm and walk in and say, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. we had a conversation, you know, before we go, you know, to the zoo today, we need to put this game away. So yeah, I see that it's not put away. Let them talk about it. Right. And mm -hmm. say, you know, what can we do to help you get this put away? Right. And then, you know, and, and depending on the age, if they were really little, you could say, let's do this together. Right. You mm -hmm. put this piece away and I'll put this piece away. Right. And what that does is that builds that relationship. They know that they have support, right. right. Instead of damaging it with punishment, like we're not going to the zoo today because you couldn't do what I say. Right. right. It's a very different, different approach. And this, the child takes something very different away from that, that yeah. experience, right. One builds on the experience. They know that they have that support. And that's what actually makes them into a stronger person, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than um, somebody who might, um, you know, we think that by punishing, we're going to build character, but it's actually yeah. the opposite. When we model what good character looks like and we make them feel good about themselves rather than bad about themselves, yeah. that's, that's really what, what moves them forward. Did you see a change in their behavior when you started to do a different approach of, of using discipline and you started to use the non-discipline method? Mm -hmm. Did you see, what changes did you start to see in your children? Yeah. So the younger two were two had never had, were never pu pu uh, punished, right? Because, yeah. you know, until a child is about two, it really is meaningless, right? There's right. really nothing you, you're doing there, but the older two, absolutely. Because the, we know we made the shift for them too. You can't punish some people. right? And I think what you see, you know, primarily is you see them relax and you see them, um, you know, want to engage with you, right? Mm -hmm. They're not trying to resist. They're not trying to, you know, there's not all that anger. There's not the slamming of the doors, yeah. right? When you can, um, uh, when they know they're not going to be punished and where we're going to have that, that conversation. Right. Um, it's a little more, a little more challenging starting when they've, you know, having to shift that for them. Yeah. yeah I have to say it was much easier with the other two because they never knew it, right? They never yeah. knew anything but that. Um, because the older two were always like, is this for real? And you know, <laughs> if you're going to go back to the, to the way things were, there's always that little bit of, um, but eventually it became, um, just, just common. Right. Yeah. And, 
and everybody thrived. They even did that. They started to teach people to do that with dogs and puppies also. They, they, you know, they started to do studies where they found if you punished a dog, if they, let's say, make in the house, the, you know, that, that you shouldn't yell at them or you shouldn't hit them or you shouldn't, you know, do any type of, you know, forceful type of punishment, you know, or even yell at them and uh, you to, to do something, to teach the dog that they did wrong in other ways. And they found that that actually helped the dog grow a better bond with their owner because they were more fearful and ashamed when they did something wrong in the house. And when they started to teach them in different ways, maybe put them in a gate or they did something, you know, different, you know, mm -hmm. just to show them, you know, that they they did something wrong. They started to actually grow better bonds and they weren't fearful of their owners. And they started to learn that, you know, they became more respectful and, and they started to listen better to their owners. Mm -hmm. it, it It is similar, right? I mean, as a living being in this case, and really with all humans, our number one, um, you know, we're social, social animals, just, just like our, 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 our dogs and cats. And, um, you know, children want that relationship. And I think what some parents struggle to understand is children really don't get up and say, I'm going to misbehave today. Yeah. You know, children make mistakes because they have so much to learn, right? Yeah. And they don't have, I think the biggest piece is they don't have what, you know, filters for their emotions. Yeah. Um, in fact, I read something interestingly yesterday. It said that children feel an emotion, immediately act, and then stop and think about it, right? Mm -hmm. And as adults, we feel an emotion and we typically think about it first, how is my reaction going to affect other people? And then we act. And right. that's really what we're, what we're teaching our children, right? Right. Is, is how to have filters on their emotions. In my book, I talk about how it's kind of like a faucet mm -hmm. of water yeah. and our children, that faucet's either all the way on or all the way off, right? It's why very young children have tantrums yeah. that anger or that frustration or that just being hungry and tired they it's, it is flowing through them full faucet and they can't, they can't regulate that. Right. And then what we learn as we mature and grow and develop is how to turn those knobs and go, okay, I yeah. feel this emotion, but I know I need to dial this back yeah. a little bit, right before I, before I respond. And so understanding that really, I, you know, when, when we punish a child, it for, from their experience, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. Because they're like, I had no idea that, that what I was doing was wrong. Right. Right. Because they, they don't go into it with that kind of intention. Their, their primary, uh, what I want to say focus is really to connect with their parents and to be part of that social unit. And right. the last thing they want to do is to create a divide there. Yeah. And so when they do misbehave, it really is 99% of the time, right? An, an mm -hmm. accident. I didn't mean to do that. Or I forgot, I forgot that we have this rule because I was so excited. You know, that an example I give is a, a child that's outside playing in the rain and having fun and they've got their boots and coat and, and that's where their energy is, right? That's that yeah. water flow is this, well, in that flow, they're not thinking about the rule that they have to take their boots off the minute they get in the house and they come right. running in the house to tell mom, right? Yeah. They just don't, have, you know, that, that facility yet. And so right. as a parent, you can yell at them or say, Hey, don't forget. And, you know, tell me about how much fun you have, but yeah. let's, let's clean up the hallway now where you made a mess with your boots. Right. Right. I've seen so many parents, you know, um, the older generation think the opposite, think that you have to have discipline and that discipline is necessary and that this younger generation is growing up with disrespect, this and that is because they don't have the discipline. But then you look at a lot of the older generation and a lot of them, you know, were, you know, the belt was used or the stick was used or they were yelling at the children or even saying that was stupid, this and that. 
And to this day, there's, I can't tell you how many people I've met that talk about their experiences because these are the things that stuck in their heads of the way their parents hit them or disciplined them or how their, you know, their parents called them stupid when they did something wrong. And some of these people grew up thinking they were stupid because Mm -hmm. their parents would say these, you know, derogatory, you know, comments to them and they grew up thinking it. And I said to a friend, you know, and I was like, well, you know, why do you think that, you know? And she's like, well, when you hear it so many times, you begin to believe it. And that was her comment to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so violence never gets you anywhere, you know, and, uh, and saying negative things about another person doesn't get you anywhere either. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that as people grow up, you know, even, even in today's world, when you, when you do negative things to somebody and you hurt somebody, or if you say something negative to somebody that usually sticks with that person and it, and it, you know, causes, you know, negative emotions. And sometimes it takes a long time for those negative emotions to heal, depending on you know, how the person's mentality is. So, you know, not using those, those techniques and just being, being able to communicate with your child and being able to explain why this is wrong, why you were upset because they did that and how we can fix it in the future. You know, the children want to please, just like, you know, we were talking about animals, animals want to please, children want to please their parents. They want to make their parents happy, especially if their parents are good to them. But if you have parents that are hitting them, or if you have parents that are saying negative things to them, why would they want to please you? They're going to have negative emotions towards that parent. And probably the bond will be broken also. Exactly. And, you know, I think the other thing that is so critical to to talk about with this is that what that child learns in that primary relationship, right? One is this person tells me they love me, but then they make me feel really bad, Yeah. Well, that's what gets ingrained and it's subconscious. It's, it's not conscious. And so what will happen is that is the kind of relationship that they'll be drawn to as an adult. Yes. So often somebody who has a very controlling parent or punitive parent will get into a relationship with a partner who's Mm -hmm. also controlling and punitive because that's what they know. That's like, well, this is what love is because this is right. This was that my first love was my, my parents. Yeah. And, and it's what the, and it, and to your point, it takes a long time to heal that it can be healed. Right. Yeah. But it, ta- it, it takes, it, it takes effort and it takes a commitment to, to really heal that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think people have to really understand that, you know, actions speak louder than words. So if you're able to really, you know, sh- do have positive reinforcement and good communication with your child, that's going to go longer. And it also it's going to teach them good qualities. So when they get to the point where they get older, they'll have better communication skills with other people. They'll even be able to have better parenting skills because they'll have, you know, be able to look at, you know, raising a child from a different way that we were once taught growing up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the other piece that you started kind of um, hint hinted at is that when we punish people, um, they actually end up being mean to other people. Yes. And so, so much of the research that I did when I was writing my book um, was that um, just hands down, right? The more a child is punished at home, the more likely they are to be a bully on the playground, yeah. right? And to hurt other children. And so that that's another cycle that we need to break. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So- and the, you know, the, the other thing I did want to add, you know, because I don't want your listeners to think that, that these, that children are just running wild. And, you know, obviously there's, there's probably more focus on the child with this approach. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not that they don't ever have to um, think about the consequences of their wrong behavior, right? But what yeah. you do is you do what's often these days referred to as restorative justice, right? So right. if they are the ones hitting their sister rather than, mm-hmm. or, you know, when they're hitting their sister and they're older, or, you know, whatever the situation is, um, you know, help them learn how to, to apologize. In, yeah sincerely, right. You can't just mm-hmm. say, you need to tell your sisters that you're sorry. Right. Yes. It's like, you know, let's stop and think about how that felt to your sister. Right. And then yeah. hopefully that, you know, again, it has to be age appropriate. And, you know, you, is there something you could say that might make her feel better? Or is there a conversation we could have? Should we bring your sister in and have a conversation about how she made you feel 
but that also what you did really wasn't appropriate. And that, you know, so you, it's, it's not like they don't have to be accountable for their actions. Right. It's just you help them be accountable in a way that is restorative mm -hmm. rather than punitive. And I, I think that's another thing too, is that how many times have you seen people do hurtful things to other human beings and they refuse to apologize for their actions? They refuse to admit that they were wrong. Oh yeah. Or yeah. And won't take, and won't be accountable. Yeah. Well, that's their fault. They're the ones that made me mad. Right. They're to blame, right? Putting blame outside rather than taking responsibility for our own actions. Yeah. And you see that a lot in, in today's society too. And you see it, especially with the older generation. And sadly, they teach it to their, you know, the children that they raise. And then it keeps, it's an endless cycle. That's why 70% of families are dysfunctional in the United States is because, you know, we keep repeating the behaviors in the environment that we grew up. It's, you know, it's time to break the cycle. It's time to show new ways of parenting. And what are some steps? What are some things that you found very effective that you might want to teach the listeners today mm -hmm. that they can maybe start implementing in their own family life? Sure. You know, I think that um, some, some key, you know, one of the things that I did very early on um, was that you want to focus on what you want your children to do, not what you want them to not do. Yeah. And so you have to try to take the word don't yeah. out of your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And again, that kind of takes some effort and stopping to think, but, um, you know, I use the example sometimes of the, you're tipping your chair back at the, at the dinner table, right. Instead of yeah. saying, don't tip your chair back. You say, Hey, I need, we need all four legs of the chair on the ground so that that we don't have an accident. Right. right. Or, um, you know, they leave the door open and saying, don't leave the door open. You know, you have yeah. to stop yourself. Right. And say, <laughs> Hey, we need to keep the door closed because, you know, we want to be responsible with our use of energy. Right. Right. So you tell them the behavior that you want. Yes. So I think that's, that is a, that's a great place to stop. Um, I think another place that is, uh, that's a, that is something that people can do is oftentimes we back our children into a corner with our questioning. Mm. And so I call it accusatory questioning. Right. Yes. And so if I say, let me think of a good example. Um, if I say something like, you know, did you, did you leave this door open so that the dog could get out? Right. Well, I have said that with such anger and clearly if I'm going to be mad at whoever did that, that backs a child into the corner. And, and especially if they're very young, their instinct is to lie. Yeah. Right. No, mommy, I didn't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you've created an environment where they're not safe to tell you the truth. They're right. not safe to talk to you about that. And so a, a second tip I would give is to refrain from using accusatory questions. Yes. And instead of questioning, just state the obvious, just make yeah. a calm statement. It's like, oh, hey, you know, Susie, I saw that you left the door open and the dog got out again. So what are some things that we can do so to help you remember that we need to keep the door closed? Yes. Right. Just, and then, then you're not, you know, backing them into a corner. Right. So swap questioning with just an observation, right? Yeah. Hey, I see that you just ran in with muddy boots. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and then just address it calmly. Right. So I think that's, that's an excellent way to do it. And then a third one I would say is to really engage your child in how do we want to run our household? How do we want to engage with each other? So, yeah. um, you know, if it's, you know, oftentimes talking about chores or contributing to the family, right. Yeah. Um, the more that a child can have a conversation or be a part of that conversation, they're much more likely to participate. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, everybody. So Saturday, we need to do some yard work, right. You know, we need to do some raking. We need to mow. We need to pull some weeds. We, um, we want to get those tomatoes planted. So, you know, how do we want to do that as a family? What, who wants to do what, you know, what are you most interested in? You know, how much time do you think as a family we should spend on that? Cause then maybe we could go do something fun, you know, and then you guide the conversation, you know? Yeah. So, Oh, I think we should only do 10 minutes. 
well, we'll probably need a little bit more time than 10 minutes. What if we did about an hour, hour and a half? You know, you just, but you engage them in the conversation. Right. So I would say those three things, tell them what you want them to do. And part of that is also saying yes, more than you say no. Right. And don't, you know, swap questions with observations and then engage, 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 right. Let them be a part of the conversations around how, how we want to, how we want to do things. Right. I like that a lot because I think it makes them feel a part of the family and they're not feeling that they're backed against the wall or they're, you know, that it kind of makes, you know, when you have, when you constantly attack somebody verbally or however, you know, it makes them grow apart and it makes them feel kind of, you know, um, less and less and less a part of that family, more like they're protecting themselves. And that's why you see so many families and so many people, they have walls and it's very hard to get a, close to those people and grow relationships with those people because all their lives they've been, you know, they've been either their, their family members, like their parents have disciplined them wrong. And, you know, they, they have a lot of trauma and a lot of events, negative events that have occurred in their, their mind, or even the emotional abuse. Cause sometimes the emotional, emotional abuse could be just as bad. And they just grow those walls just to protect themselves, you know, and as soon as they, a trigger point, you know, happens in their current status in their present life, that wall goes right up. And, you know, then it's very hard for them to grow those relations, those positive relationships. And that's where that, you know, that cycle keeps building and building and building. Now you wrote a book and I'd like to hear more about the book. You, so you wrote a book based on this topic that we were talking about today about discipline without punishment. Can you tell us a little about that book? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the kind of the framework for the book is, is really talking about my journey because I think it's helpful for readers to say, she did this, right? I'm not just talking about an idea. I'm talking about, I actually tried this, yeah. you know, and, and, and it was very successful. Um, and so, uh, that's kind of the, the underlying thing, giving examples and here's how it works. But, um, I really provide some information on the why, yeah. you know, a lot of what you and I have talked about today is in there. Why is this so important? Mm-hmm. And then I provide, um, ideas and uh, practices that parents can explore. Um, Throughout my book, I always want parents to know that no one knows their their child better than them. And so no matter what I recommend, they need to stop and say, is this, is this right for my family? Right. So, um, you know, lots of ideas, age appropriate. So Mm -hmm. the chapters in the middle of the book are broken up by age groups and, um, support how to, you know, help teenagers or how to help preteens or, you know, um, younger children. And then really at the, the, the last section, so it's broken into three sections. The last section is really looking at yourself as a parent, um, primarily self-care, um, Mm -hmm. because that's important too. If, if a parent is tired, if a parent is not eating well. Um, if a parent isn't getting, it doesn't have support from the outside, right? That makes all of this work much more challenging because like yeah. I said, this isn't easy. This isn't saying I'm not going to punishment and therefore I'm not going to even engage with my child. They can just do whatever they want, right. right? It's not that at all. It's really engaging with your child and really helping them. You're their teacher, yeah. their guide, their mm-hmm. coach, their person that you're going to help them learn. And so that last section of the book really helps, um, parents think about, um, that self-care it helps them think about, um, you know, there's a pretty big section on triggers and hot buttons because, yeah. um, children, uh, <laughs> probably more than anybody else can trigger us. Yes. And we need to stop and say, now, wait a minute, that's not them. This is me, yeah. right? This is one of my issues from probably my family of origin. And right. so helping them think through that process as well. So that's I think, what's I think that's book. important too. And, you know, I, I like that a lot because I think, I think they, you know, people don't know where to begin and knowing some positive practices that they can incorporate into their lives is, is really important. And especially when you say triggers, you know, parents can get so easily, you know, if it, <laughs> they just, you know, especially if it's repeatedly done over and over and over again, 
having a hard day at work. Maybe they're not having the perfect marriage. Maybe things are going wrong here or there and, or they're just not getting enough sleep. Little, the littlest things that don't go well and then unbalance your life. When, you know, when your child does something, your patience level goes down and you might not be as patient as you were, you know, especially, you know, people have babies later in life. I don't know if you remember, but I'm sure if you compare your first child or your second child with your third or fourth, your patience level and your energy level changes deeply as you get older, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes parents, their, their patience level, you know, isn't as good as it was maybe a few years back. And then they have to stop and think, well, what can I do to, to work on my patience level? What can I do from, you know, because sometimes it's not all about the child. It's about the parent sometimes too. And learn how to make those adjustments, you know, because people get fixated on behaviors and it's breaking those behaviors. That's important. And then sometimes it can be hard in the beginning, but once you get started, you know, it becomes easier and easier. And have you seen people, you know, have a hard time, or maybe you had a hard time in the beginning changing your behaviors and trying this different way of parenting because you were so used to one way. And then you had to make all these readjustments in your life. You know, how did, you know, how did you feel and how did you do it? Absolutely. Um, you know, I talked about how you need to take the word don't out of your, out of your vocabulary. And so yeah. what I found during that time period, it took several months, right? Is you end up stammering. You're like, duh, 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 cause you want to say don't, right? Yeah. It's just natural. Yeah. And so, you know, you have to kind of just stop yourself. And so, um, you know, being very conscious, being very committed, you kind of have to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do this. Yes. And then also granting yourself grace, right? Mm -hmm. I am going to stammer and I might say something really ridiculous, right? But I'm, I'm making progress every day towards this goal and I'm committed to doing this. And so, yeah. um, it, it does take some effort, but I'll tell you the rewards are pretty quick. Like I said, mm -hmm. it's so nice to, um, you know, it's just so much better for you. I mean, the, the examples that I've given today, that mom who's yelling at their child because they just came in from the, from the rain, yeah. you know, and, and just, and I think I'm, you know, this is obviously my calling. And so I think I'm ultra sensitive, but yeah. to think about that little child who has just had this amazing experience and just wants to share it with you. And they're so excited. And instead of being, um, celebrating with them. Yeah. You attack them for the muddy boots. Right. right? I mean, it just, sometimes it's heart wrenching for me to think about what we do to do to our kids. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's just, uh, the, you know, you have to think about those rewards at the end because it, it does take effort and you just, again, just keep trying, give yourself grace you know, the last thing that I ever want to do is make a parent feel bad about what they're currently doing or what they've done in the past. Right. Right. Um, you know, this is day one, this is where we're starting. And, yes. you know, every, you know, you said it, I think when we first started talking is people do the best they can with what they know and the resources they have. And so you have to be kind to yourself and say, I've done the best I could up to this point. I didn't have this information before. Now I do. Now I'm really excited about trying this. Yeah. Right. And so I think it's so important to keep this conversation positive, to support parents and feeling really good about yeah. what they're doing and feeling really good about their relationship with their children. Oh, a hundred percent. Now, if you had to take some takeaways, you know, from what we talked about today, what are some important factors that you'd like to emphasize on? So I would say my um, important factors would be first is that children really thrive in an environment of support, right? So um, not only is it uh, improving what what kind of what we've talked about, but it mm -hmm. actually kind of elevates the child, right? Yeah. They, they're they now um, more open-hearted, right? They're going to thrive. They're going to be more interested in following their passions. So that right. would be the first takeaway. Um, the second is that um, as parents, it's really our responsibility to teach them, yes. right? And so shifting that mindset is that discipline is really about teaching right? Think about, it comes from the word disciple, yeah. right? It's that, um, it's teaching, it's not controlling. Right. Right. And then the third one, which I've said on several occasions already is that the true gift in, in this model is the gift to the parent. 
and transforming not only this relationship with your child, but many of the relationships in your life, because you are now, um, you know, the way that we parent our child is how we're kind of parenting ourselves. Yeah. So if we're using kind language outward, we're probably using kind language inward and it really can not only transform that relationship, but, but yourself. Yes, definitely. A hundred percent. Now, what kind of services do you provide? On, I, Cause I saw your website and it shows that you have different services. Can you tell us about some of the services that you provide for others? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so th- the primary service is coaching. And so I provide uh, parents with a, um, a 30 minute trial, right? Cause nobody, you know, I don't want anybody to ever feel like, um, you know, that this is a very, intimate part of our lives. And so I Mm. want them to feel comfortable and know um, how I engage with them, but it's really helping them through maybe rough spots or trouble spots, or just really struggling to come up with that creative solution on how to address an issue. Um, So certainly parent coaching, Mm -hmm. and then I am getting ready to launch a uh, online course. It's not quite ready yet, but it'll be ready shortly. And so that will be something that parents can do on their own Mm -hmm. through, you know, videos and exercises. Um, I'm very excited about it. And then also parent workshops or, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I have scheduled a a, a session with a group of parents where we're just going to do almost like a, um, a a book study, right. And just talk about, uh, what's happening in their lives, you know, as a group. So Um, you know, just uh, provide services to parents to support them um, in making this shift and and in this great journey. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, where can people find your website? So my website is um, just my name, Rebecca Wolf, and that's R-E-B-E-C-C-A-W-O-U-L-F-E. So unusual spelling of wolf, (laughs) RebeccaWolf.com. And, um, all the information on the book is there. Uh, the book is available anywhere that you can buy books. So at Barnes and Noble online or Amazon online. And, um, again, it's the gift of a punishment free childhood, a new way to parent for a new world. So I love very it. Excited. Yes. And this is, you know, this has been wonderful because I think it's so important. You know, I think times are changing, people are changing and, you know, the younger generation is is looking at life differently. And I think as a whole, we all need to look at life differently and really be more open to different ways of parenting and not get so stuck on how our parents, you know, parented us, but look at ways that are more effective ways, you know, because if you think about it, if you're trying to, if you have a child and you're disciplining them and you're disciplined them and they're really doing the same things over and over and over again and they're acting out and they're they're not they're not progressing positively obviously it's not working so you know it's 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 nice to be able to not have to really be able to to be able to discipline your child but do it in in a punishment free way where you know they're not getting hurt emotionally or physically and the parents, you know, are, are getting progress and they're making progress and they're increasing their bonds with their children. So it's an all way winning situation. And I think it's something every parent really should take the time out to look into. And even, even grandparents, you know, what you, 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 whatever you do with your, your kids, you sometimes tend to, you'll, you'll do it with your grandkids, not even realizing it. And sometimes, you know, even for grandkids, for grandparents, maybe they should look into these things and, and learn a little about, about it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, there's never, it's never too late to learn, you know, and it's, it's great sometimes to be able to break those bad habits and implement good habits into our, into our daily lives, you know, just think how wonderful the world will be if everyone did that. Mm -hmm. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. This has been great, Rebecca. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to maybe talking to you in the future. You've been great. This is this is a great topic. And I, I thank you so much for taking the time out to really open up people's minds and, and bring in something new and that could actually improve a whole family's life. Well, great. Well, Stacey, thank you so much for having me on the show. I truly enjoyed getting to know you and, and sharing uh, these ideas with, with your listeners. Well, thank you. And you have a great day. Thank you.